What's up guys, today I'm going to be going over the third daily buff, the Void Empowerment buff for Sources of Heroes. I will be breaking down exactly what it does, there's going to be a lot of things that this one does compared to some of the others. Then also we'll be showing off some cool builds that take advantage of this buff, one per character, there will actually be two on Titan in this video. So let's go ahead and begin first with what this buff does. You first have to pick up 30 Void Elemental Orbs which spawn in based off your subclass and also your weapon. So we're going to be using a lot of Void subclasses and also Void weapons in this video. The first thing you'll notice when you pick up your 30th one is when you crouch you go invisible. And it's only when you're crouching, if, when you stand up, you instantly become visible again. So it's only when you're crouching. So if you want to walk around while doing it, you have to crouch walk. Or what I found is you can sprint slide, sprint slide over and over again, and it'll keep you invisible the entire way. So that's going to be the best way to get around while maintaining invisibility. So if being invisible on any subclass in the entire game is not cool enough, what also happens when you're invisible is you get all of your abilities very, very quickly. I believe even your super slides up quicker. So it's pretty much like Nezrexin on all classes and all characters turned up to like 12. It is extremely quick. And not only do you get all of your abilities very quickly, as you see my Vortex Nade usually hits for 2656. Now with Void Empowerment, it's going to go up to 5312 which is going to be exactly double damage, which is pretty crazy because you pretty much have infinite grenades while invis, then they also do 2x damage, so that's actually really cool. And finally, the last thing Void Empowerment does, just like the other empowerments, is it'll, it'll make Void roaming supers last a lot longer, pretty much exactly two times longer as long as you're not spamming them. So now that we know what the Void Empowerment buff does, moving on to the builds for this video. First on Warlock, we're going to be using Bottom Tree Void Walker, which is Devour which is my favorite subclass in the game. And then we're gonna be using Telesto, which is one of the best Void Ackler weapons in the entire game. So pretty good combo. Then also Guillotine for boss damage. And our exotic armor piece of choice will be Nezrek Sin. That way, anytime we get Void damage kills, it'll increase the ability recharge rate of all of our abilities plus super, which as you can imagine, when we're invis with Void Empowerment, will be even quicker. Then we also have Heavy Handed for the second part of the perk, which is when we're surrounded and get kills with our Telesto, we'll get ammo back to the reserves. Right now, I'm using Telesto in a AR. You could use a shotgun in the top slot because that will also work with heavy handed. And you really don't have to worry about ammo in your Telesto, so you can take advantage of double special if you want. The next mod will be Quick Charge, which means we'll become chargeable light when we get double kills with Telesto, which will be all the time. Then we also have Supercharged on our boots, that way we can get up to times 4 chargeable light. Finally, the last mods we'll be using will be Oppressive Darkness on our Bond. Then also this one right here, Extra Reserves which means as we get charged with light higher and higher stacks, there will be a better and better chance to spawn in a special ammo brick, and when that happens, it will reset our stacks of charge with light. So pretty much how this whole build works is you just go around spamming Telesto with infinite ammo, which will drop a lot of void orbs, pick those up, and you'll be coming void empowered in no time. And this build is already insanely strong for Ackler, but then when you add in the fact that you're going to be invisible once you're void empowered and having your abilities even quicker, you pretty much can spam your nade as fast as you can press the button and that nade will debuff everything because of press the darkness and also do 2x damage because of the void empowerment buff so yeah you just have infinite grenades infinite telesto ammo just infinite of all of your abilities it is pretty much the ultimate void walker build now moving on to the hunter build for this video i wanted to use runus effigy for this video because of the fact that i think it pairs really well with invisibility but the void empowerment invisibility doesn't really synergize with hunter invisibility in any way they don't like overlap or proc each other so it doesn't quite work but i can't really think of anything that would be better for this i still wanted to use a void hunter subclass for the 2x void nade damage while empowered so i couldn't really think of anything else you could really do i still think the ruinous effigy invisibility to become empowered is still a very solid build so that's what I went with, but once you're empowered, you're pretty much just spamming your grenade, just like you were on Warlock. You can throw your invisibility smoke at your feet, which will give you a chunk in the first place and speed up that process. But overall, this is all I could really come up with on Hunter that was still on the Void subclass. I did have a trip mine grenade build, but it doesn't have the 2x damage, so it's kind of pointless. So yeah. And now moving on to the final character, Titan. Hopefully these two builds make up for the lack of a cool Hunter build. So we're going to start off with Magnetic Grenades, which will be very important for the first build. Then we'll also be on Middle Tree Sentinel. That way we have really good chain at clear. Then we will be using Heart of Inmost Light, which is where using an ability, Grenade, Melee, or Barricade empowers the other two abilities. Empowered means abilities have faster regen, Melees and Grenades do more damage, and Barricades have more hit points. And with that, our weapons of choice will be Swashbuckler Weapons, so Monte Carlo, then also a True Teller with Swashbuckler and Grave Robber. And this build's gonna be all about grenade damage. First, without anything going on, we hit 13279 per tick of our magnetic grenade. 
Now we go ahead and put down our barricade and get empowered with our exotic armor piece. And now it goes up to 17.263, which is going to be 30% more grenade damage. Then what you can do on top of that is put down your rally barricade, then also use a charge melee hit. And that sometimes procs empowered times two, which makes our grenade go up to 22.441, which is going to be 60% more damage. But that doesn't work that often. This exotic is pretty buggy. So more often than not, you'll only have empowered times one. But even with just times one empowered, when you have void empowerment buff with a 2x nade damage on top of all that stuff, these nades are hitting for a lot. I mean, you're pretty much matching heavy weapon DPS with your grenade. And every single time you crouch and go invis, you get your grenade back very quickly, which pretty much means you have really good DPS with your grenades for 30 full seconds. And finishing off the build with the mods, we'll be using Blast Radius. With our Truth Teller, every single time we get a double kill, we become charged with light, then times two because of stacks on stacks. Then we also have Heavy Handed for the first part of this time, where you get half your melee charge back while charge of light when you use it. Then finally, the last mod we'll be using is a Press of Darkness. And then you kind of have a free slot for whatever you want. And the whole point of this build is you can pretty much just spam your charge void melee and get it back instantly because of Heavy Handed and also the way Middle Tree works on this subclass. Then once you get 30 void orbs picked up, then you just spam your grenade left and right, which does a lot of damage. Then finally, the other version of this build will take off the exotic chest piece and put on Doomfang Pauldron instead, which will help us get our super very quickly, the same way we were doing it before with our charge void melee. Same way, same things going on heavy handed plus middle tree. So by the time we get 30 orbs and become void empowered, we will then have our super. And now in our super with Doomfang Pauldron, we can pretty much throw our shield, then slide, which will make us invisible, which means we'll get all of our abilities back, including our shield throw very quickly and you can pretty much do that over and over again shield throw slide shield throw slide over and over and every single time you get a hit with the shield it will give you super energy back because of doom Fang. so as long as you're void and powered you will have infinite shield throws which also means your super will be infinite also and if there's enough as around you'll be picking up void orbs while doing this which means by the time the 30 seconds is up you might already be close to being empowered again and easily be able to chain this pretty much forever. Anyways, that's gonna be it for this video. The Hunter build wasn't that amazing, but the Titan build of both versions of it are extremely strong. In the first one, you pretty much have some of the strongest grenades in the history of Destiny forever over and over again. Then the second version is you have an infinite super ability. Then on the Warlock build, that is one of my favorite Agler builds in the entire game, and the Void Empowerment just makes it even stronger. In the rest of the video will just be some strike gameplay with the builds. Let me know which one of these were your favorite. And now that we've made all three videos, which of the nine total builds between the three days is your favorite? Anyways, thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time.